All right, I'm gonna switch back to the photograph probably in a, a couple of minutes to show you a couple of things. But for now, what I wanna do is since that I've since I've got that masking fluid completely masked out, I've painted that darker kind of reddish purple that I knew I needed without having to paint around those little tiny stamen shapes. So everything is dry and I'm gonna take my eraser now, I'm gonna pull out the masking fluid just in that one section that I painted with fluid, right? So now I've got the white of the paper back, right? And then I can go back and paint in the little yellows and the, the places of, that, of those white stamens that, that need a little, little more articulation, right? So I've got, I've got um, the white of the paper reserved for me because I used the masking fluid there. But what I'm gonna show you now is because I've got that kind of rim of masking fluid around the flower that I've painted with these grays already, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the background, which is gonna be, if I jump back to the picture here just to show you really quick. The background is obviously a mix of blues. I've got some kind of deep browns. I've probably got some pretty close to a black area. There are some places that start to turn a little bit pink. There's some greens in there. So if I work quickly, I might be able to drop in some of those other colors, but the thing about wet into wet is that you have to do it while it's still wet, right? So that, that's kind of the trick here. So we'll see what I'm, what I'm able to do. And then there are, there are also some places that get a little bit white, right? So there are these flowers, but they're, they're blurred out in the background. So let's jump to back to our painting. So for that, I'm gonna grab really quickly my big flat brush, right? So my one inch brush. I'm gonna take some water. And just with the water, I'm gonna paint my background just with water. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna do kind of the right, the right side. And you can do your background in sections like this so that you don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I gotta get the, the whole thing done in one, in one pass. All right, so working quickly, this is wet, right? So the wet into wet technique for my blurry background is I'm gonna pick up some of my blue to put in my blue sky. And I have to be able to see what, what I should paint, so I'm gonna put the photograph back up. And I'm gonna work quickly with this blue. Whoops, you guys can't see my painting. I'm gonna move it over. And you notice I've got lots of water in this. I'm gonna leave some of those kind of white dappley shapes that I'm noticing. But again, because I've got that masking fluid along the edges of my flower, it's kind of creating a, you know, a little bit of a dam for me. That's good. Bit of a, a border up against my flower. And I'm gonna maybe leave some places like the top of this kind of big tree trunk. Be along that section. The blacks and the dark browns of the, of the tree branches and stuff in the background, I don't have to worry about painting over those because they're darker, right? They're gonna be darker than this blue. Noticing some kind of round shapes. I'm gonna maybe leave some of those. And then nothing in 
this process is dictated by the photograph necessarily. So in other words, if you are noticing things that you want to leave out, that you want to edit out, you can certainly do that. So because I want my background to have less contrast and to be kind of softer focus, if I notice places in the wet into wet washes that are starting to kind of make sharp edges, I can go back right with my damp brush and I can certainly kind of drop in some water, right? Dropping in water is, um, is a great way to soften up something. And if I feel like the color is puddling in some places more than others, that I, you know, I don't like the way it's puddling, I can go back and push it around a little bit. And maybe I'm gonna leave some places a little less blue than others, right? So I might be, I might kind of leave what I have in terms of the, the blue. And maybe I'll go ahead for the purposes of this side over here. I'll go ahead and put some blue. And you'll probably you'll notice the difference in that area because I did not use as much water. So it's giving me some sharper edges. So I really want to kind of soften those if I if I can. All right. So if this were a painting I was going to do the whole left side here, obviously I would keep keep those blues going. All right. So now that I've got some blue for the background, I'm going to, while the blues are still a little bit wet, I'm going to go back with, with my, I've got a raw umber, which is a dark brown, and I've got a burnt sienna, and I'm going to use a combination of those, but I'm also going to add my same blue, right, that ultramarine blue, to really deepen that up, right? It's going to cool it, but also make it darker. While this is still wet, I'm going to kind of suggest a little bit the larger shapes of tree trunks, branches, I should say. Putting those in wet into wet. This gets a little bit darker and thicker up here. Maybe a branch that kind of goes this direction. A few over here on the left. These got a little bit more dry, so I might need to go back and drop in some water there. Arthur, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Are you using wet into wet for those branches because it's kind of like a blurred background? Yes. Okay. So I'm because how to do that. Yeah, so because I don't want the sharp focus in my background, the wet into wet technique is what, you know, it's what it allows that to be much less defined and kind of reads as background because it doesn't have sharp edges, right? So places where it's kind of bleeding outward, 
into the colors around it, for example, you know, that's, that's what kind of creates that effect of photography. Um, this part is a little bit more dry, so may not do quite as well with my branch shapes. And, you know, there might be places, for example, in this section where I want to perhaps widen the shape a little bit to deepen the color a little bit. But one of the keys to using this wet into wet technique is to try not to overwork it and to overdo it, right? It's, it's kind of easy to do that. So if I'm kind of leaving some of the work of the blurriness to the wetness of the painting, right? That's that's kind of what I'm what I'm after. I don't I don't want to articulate every single thing in this background. I'm just kind of letting letting the blending and the blurriness happen because I'm, you know, dropping one wet color right into another wet color, right? So the effect, hopefully, is, you know, one, one that kind of looks a little bit looser, right? You're letting, letting the painting look like a watercolor painting, but you're suggesting forms. And, you know, you can suggest them at different levels, right? So, for example, in this section down in that, in this area, we were noticing in the photograph that it, it has some greens to it. Right. I'm going to grab my other palette. If I wanted to add, for example, a viridian green, which is not necessarily a super natural looking green, but I can mix it with my yellow ochre. Right? Yellow ochre is a super, super handy kind of color, right? It kind of gives some natural, some natural tones to my, my viridian green. So I noticed in this section I've got some green areas. So I might add a little bit of that viridian, kind of move it around, suggesting some of these stems of these blossoms. And then I'm gonna go back with my burnt sienna, which is my which is my brown. And I'm gonna drop in some of the some of the brownish kind of yellow ochre on top of that green. I'm gonna let some parts of it kind of puddle up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back with a little bit of water in my brush and again just kind of allow some of those forms that I put in there to be obscured to be softened and you know there may be some more of those green areas that I that I you know eventually want to add and I can certainly continue those in other places. There might be a couple up here, for example. But this is kind of the idea of painting wet into wet, that you're letting those, those wet colors kind of run together, right? And the places where you want to drop in those contrasting colors, do that while it's still wet, right? So that you have that kind of bleeding effect and you, you know, you certainly have a little bit softer focus for things that happen in the background. You can go back, you can soften those with a little bit of water in your brush and kind of run those along so that they kind of, you know, they have that kind of more liquid flow to them. 
but also try to, you know, try not to over overdo it, right? There is such a thing as kind of an over an overworked, you know, background painting. And this kind of background, you know, is something that you're kind of letting the characteristics of the medium, right? The, the watercolor medium is one of the only kind of painting media that, that does this, you know, this well, right? So don't, don't feel like it has to look like an airbrushed effect, right? It can still look like a watercolor painting, right? So if it dries into a puddle or, you know, you can obviously see the effects of the watercolor medium, you know, please don't sweat that because you can, you know, let it look like a painting, right? It doesn't, doesn't have to look like a photograph. The effects, though, you'll be surprised, will be somewhat photographic because if you do a wet into wet background, right, contrasted with sharper edges for the foreground, right, for your plant, your flower, you, you, you are going to get some of that kind of photographic look, okay? So that's kind of the, the idea for, for this one. And then, you know, the last thing I would do, obviously, in a painting like this, is everything would be dry, the background would be completely dry and set, but then I would erase the masking fluid, right? So all of that kind of yellowy stuff around the rim of the flower, I would simply take out with, you know, a white block eraser, a gentle eraser, take it out, and then I'm gonna have the brightness of the white of the paper back, okay? Can't do it now, because the, the, the background is still wet. 